Hi, and welcome back to another segment of Terminating Low Voltage Cables. Hey, I'm Ron with Ideal Industries, and welcome to my shop. And in this segment, we're going to uh, terminate a uh, modular plug on the end of a Category 5E cable. And uh, this takes a little practice. I'm going to tell you the first one you should do is not the one in front of the customer. Uh, go home. Uh, I tell everybody with a box of connectors and a, and a pump of wire and put one on and cut it off and put one on and cut it off. And uh, there's nothing in the standards saying that you can't make your own patch cords. As a matter of fact, we sell a lot of little mod, mod plugs every year. And it's for technicians who, for whatever reason, are out of patch cords on the end of, at the end of the day. They'll make one up, or they want a very specific length. They can do that as well. Um, so uh, you can certainly make your own patch cords, but it's important to make sure you do it right. And then we'll step you some, through some of the procedures on how to do that. And I'm going to start with a little close-up on the mod plug itself here and give you some insights of, the, of, of what actually is going on inside the plug and what we want to see happen. Looking closely at the modular plug, and how it's put on the Category cable. And one tip, by the way, would be to make sure you, if you buy Cat 5E cable, you ought to buy Cat 5E plugs and vice versa. If you've got Cat 6, you should be Cat 6 plugs. They need to be ready for whatever the cable they're putting on. When you look at a modular plug, and uh, you look at the back end of this, there's an opening back here that essentially allows the uh, cable to enter the back of the plug. Now, on top of that is a plastic piece that as the tool, as it crimps the plug down, is going to drive that plastic on top of this outer jacket and provide some strain relief. So when we get done, that plastic's got to be, you know, that outer jacket's going to be underneath the plastic and all the way down. Now, in category cables, when we terminate, we're basically allowed to leave untwisted roughly a half inch of cable per pair. Uh, so from here, this part of the plug to the very end of the plug, that distance is roughly that half inch we're allowed to be uh, untwisted. Now, right behind the pins is a slot, and that is actually a secondary strain relief that uh, can be driven down on top of the conductors. Uh, the tool we're going to use right now won't do that, but uh, that's what it is. And then the, you have the, they have the gold pins sitting right here as well. Now, the gold pins are kind of important because when you buy plugs, they can be ready for solid or stranded wire. And technically, a plug rate for stranded should only be used on stranded cable. A plug rate for solid actually can be used on either. Uh, and uh, this one little tip is uh, pretty important because I've run across lots of folks over the years that I uh, think my crimping tool is a piece of crap or the tester's got to be wrong and, and they're making plugs uh, or patch cords up with uh, you know, stranded plugs going on solid wire. And the way we tell the difference between the two is we have to look at the little gold pin in the side of the plug. And this one here, there are actually three little teeth in the bottom of the, mod, of the pin. And that is a plug rated for solid wire. Here, you'll see that there are actually only two teeth in the gold pin, and that indicates to me that it is rated for stranded wire only. And that's how this, you know, really the only way to physically tell the difference between the two. Uh, and that one little tip will save you a ton of time in the field right there. So we're going to be putting uh, a, a plug rated for solid on solid Category 5E cable. Now you'll also notice the pins are sitting up. They're a little proud of the plastic housing. And uh, as they get driven on top of the conductors, they'll be down below the body. And I'll warn you, if the dies were out in your crimping tools, they don't crimp all the pins evenly, so make sure that they're all the way down. So in this properly terminated plug we're looking at, the back end here is looking good. We've got the outer jacket underneath this back string relief. There's our half inch that looks pretty good too. All the pins are down like I need them to be. And then if I look right here at the very end of the plug, I can see uh, there are all the conductors through that clear front. And if, I, if, all, if all that looks good, and hopefully I've got the wires in the right spots, it should work just fine. And I'm going to show you next how to actually terminate that plug on that wire. I'm going to terminate the Category 5E plug onto the Category 5E cable for you now. And, and uh, the tools we're going to use to do this with are, a, uh, again, a, a UTP or Category stripper to strip the outer jacketing. We, we need, again, a pair of snips to cut out the uh, nylon rip cord out of the cabling. And then we'll need a uh, crimping tool that will actually crimp uh, the uh, connector for us. And uh, with this particular tool, we'll do RJ11s and the typical RG45 format you see for Category 5E jacks as well, or plugs, I should say. So, first thing we need to do is to uh, remove about two inches of this outer jacketing. And again, I'm going to basically just use my 
uh, Category 5E stripper, open it up, uh, get, uh, get about two inches there, and again, once, maybe twice with the stripper is all you got to do, and then to remove the, the stripper, uh, don't remove the jacketing with the stripper, and it again pop and break it, and uh, it will strip the cable very nicely for us. Again, there's this nylon little rip cord in here. We're going to cut this out of here. And the first thing we're going to do when we go to uh, make th uh, the connection up is I need to separate the pairs. And you'll notice that if you look at the end of the wire here, every pair is naturally laying someplace around the outer jacket. And wherever it's naturally laying, I'm going to fold them into four little corners like that. And that one little tip uh, will really help do conductors lay properly. Now the next thing we have to do is untwist the pairs. Now, we, again, we don't want to untwist any of the cabling uh, inside the jacketing. We just want to untwist what's on the outside. So I'm going to pinch it right there pretty good and grab hold of a, a, a pair and untwist it right down to the jacket. Now, the conductors will be a little uh, kinky or, or bent like that on you. Just take your fingers like this and straighten them and move on to the, to the next pair. And I'm basically untwisting all four pairs right down to the jacketing and you know over the years I've seen a lot of interesting ways of untwisting uh, of the pairs but I'm going to tell you the best way to do this is by hand and we want nice straight conductors we're going to leave them in their four little corners uh, you're going to see that uh, some of these are twisted more than others and there's a reason for that it helps with our, our noise or our crosstalk problems and uh, again, untwisting of the pairs is the number one thing you don't want to do. And we're only going to be allowed a half inch of untwisting when we get done making this connection up. And there are my four pairs, uh, and uh, they are untwisted and in the right positions. Now, we get to make a decision on how you want to wire the bond plug. Do you want to do 568A or 568B? And we won't get into those wiring schemes here, which one you should pick. But I'll say I'll do a 568B. And with that, in a B format, the white, orange, and orange pair have to be on the left side of me as I look at it. Now, I'm going to fold this out almost like I would a deck of cards, but I'm not going to lay this white, orange, and orange over here like this because the, the conductors were crossing things and things just aren't going to lay flat. I tell you the best thing to do is take this white, orange pair and rotate the orange pair until it is on my left over here. And I'm just going to lay these conductors in the wiring scheme, one, two, is white, orange, and orange. White green is the third pair that we're going to lay in, or third condu or conductor, then blue, white blue up the top, greens on the other side, and it should be white brown brown. And I fan them out in the right color sequence from left to right. And I'm going to just sim whoops, I'm going to simply just pinch these a little bit right here. I'm going to go out past the jacketing, maybe about a quarter inch, pinch everything flat. That allows me to take these conductors now and move these a little closer together. And I'm going to just simply fold them out like that. I'm going to bring these this way. But since I got everything pinched flat right here, everything should stay in its right order. And then I'm going to turn it like this, take my other hand and grab it like that, and then go back and forth a couple times and pull it straight out. And then I'm going to grab it one more time instead of going back and forth, we're going to give it a little bit of a twist. And they should be laying in there pretty nice and flat when you get done doing that. And now I'm going to double check the color sequence because the time to double check that is not after the uh, you've cut them too short. Because uh, if you cut them short, um, cut them off at a half inch, and it's not in the right sequence, you might as well just start over. And they look like they're in the right sequence there. And now I'm going to head and trim them. Now again, we're allowed to leave about a half inch, and uh, folks, you can always trim a little more off. So if you gauge, you know, what side of a half inch are you, might cheat to the five eight size. So I'm going to give myself a good half inch and trim the wire straight across. Now when we go to put them in the mod plug itself, you'll notice that the white orange is on my left. When I pick up the plug, the, the gold pins are facing me. So white orange is on my left, the gold pins are facing me, and I just insert them right into the plug like that. Now I want to make sure the gray jacket is underneath the strain relief like I want it to be. Okay. Uh, I want to make sure the conductors are all the way through, and can I see them all the way through the front of the plug and I believe it's ready to be crimped. Now we're going to crimp that inside the tool here and the, the uh, connector will load right in the front die of the tool just like that. Now the connector will only go in one side of the tool so that you, you know you got it in the right place. 
And when we go to crimp this, we don't want to be pulling the, the cable to one side or the other. We want to be straight up and down on it. And if anything, I'm going to push this cable into the connector so, or into the tool so I know it's in there and bottom them out. And then I'm going to simply squeeze this down. When you squeeze this down, it drives the pins down and uh, makes a connection for us. And when we get done with the finished product here, I can see that my uh, gray jacket is underneath the strain relief like I like it to be. I've got my conductors all the way through the ends of the wire. The gold pins are all down like they're supposed to. And I can see all the conductors through the clear front. And um, it looks like it's good. And that's one half of a patch cord. And uh, you would make the other side exactly the same way. And if I've done this side here in a B format, the other end would also be in a B. And if it's A, they'd both be A. The, the only variation from that is what they refer to as crossover cables, where a technician would do an A on one side and a B on the other. And, uh, uh, but there you have it. There's a properly terminated Category 5B plug. And uh, join me next time in a segment of terminating low-voltage cables. I'm Ron with Ideal Industries.